I uh, was over at the studio one day in um, Hollywood and watching some people record and I noticed that they would use the computer to set up to... B.B. King on the computer revolution. So I went and started to talk to a couple of my friends that I knew had personal computers. And they said, well, in the future, this is going to be it, man. You'll be able to use them for music. Remember, computers, the personal kind, were going to set the world on fire. You were going to be able to attach them directly to your brain, to your emotions, and fly. Well, it's happening, finally. And the one that's doing it, the Amiga, has a passionate following, not surprisingly. Brain surgeons, musicians, writers, artists, videographic designers, astronomers, visionaries. In other words, people who need computers to express, search, capture, embody, to explore concepts, and who don't want to wait another 50 years to do so, have found the Amiga. And the Amiga has found them. Watch what they're doing with the Amiga. Maybe you're next. He's using it to unlock children's minds. So we started using the computer as a way of teaching reading and as a way of eliminating poor reading as an obstacle to learning. This environment is uh, what we call talking text. Our special depot. And we had a uh, question of whether we went with a $1,500 system that which, which was affordable for uh, most American families and schools or whether we would go with a uh, $5,500 or a $7,800 system using Macintosh or uh, IBM or Compact. It was simple a matter of performance for price. And so one of the salesmen, which was a very nice guy, said to me, he said, B, this here, showing me the Amiga, is the computer of the future. Well, I must tell you, to be honest with you, I thought that he was trying to sell me the computer. <laughs> She's using it for business. In fact, she's made a business out of it. With our Amiga systems, for example, we can create a, a corporate logo for a customer. We can create it once on the Amiga. We then have the option within our company to spit it out as 35 millimeter slide, 4x5 transparency, camera-ready art, plate-ready film, positive film for silk screening, videotape to be merged into other images. At the time that this piece was produced, it could not have been produced on any of the other micro-based platforms. But an interesting example is that my five-year-old son, for example, had never set eyes on a Nintendo game until about two weeks ago at his cousin's, and he was horrendously disappointed in what he saw on the screen, because what he's grown up with is, ever since he was a tiny child, there have been Amiga-based games around the house. But it's the same terminal that I can use to take care of accounting-related functions when I'm at home or carry over production jobs that I didn't get completed through the day. He's using it to make his presentations move. I use a computer because I do a lot of storyboarding. Before, when I was just making print storyboards, here's an example of a print storyboard for Three Men and a Baby. I used to basically walk into the client and show them a print storyboard. The program I use the most uh, to create storyboards and stuff is a program called Deluxe Paint 3. It was a great program. It's gotten better and better. Now it has animation capabilities. Computer for the creative mind, I think it's, it's, it's right on, you know? In a regular uh, kind of marker comp or airbrush comping world, ideas get away before you can get them down on paper. You know, with the Amiga, you can, you can create an image and save it off to disk and be on to the next one before those ideas get away. Sure enough, I got it to the house. I taken it and I took it out and instead of using the board, I could use the mouse and I, and I started having a good time right off with it. He's using it to give the Pentagon what it asked for, more realism. We can put a person into any world we choose, whether it be in an airplane or a car or a boat or a spaceship. The Amiga is a fantastic machine for doing those kinds of things. For example, um, in this case, here we have uh, showing the dashboard. And I can begin to render a screen, turn on the blue horizon, and see how quickly it was easy just to make a color change. I can then put together a roadway. And these tools allow me to play the what-if games uh, from an artistic standpoint. White line down the middle, what I'm doing here is creating a world. This is a world running into a park, and then I can change the background color to a little bit lighter of a blue and erect a building right next to it. Say a white building here. 
We can create a person fairly easily. This is what we call our little cardboard people. They're just roughed out, just like the way I'm doing it here. And these are turned over to the programmers. There, there isn't any machine that, that I know of that for under $1,000, like for an Amiga 500, that you can have the, the sound quality, the four channels of digital sound, the uh, resolution of graphics that you have here, the number of colors that you have here, and the kinds of other software tools that are available on the marketplace. Amiga is a very well-supported machine. Um, it's a machine of choice by a lot of programmers, musicians, and artists. Even the people who have much more expensive computers in our office also have an Amiga. He's using it to invent games. I started doing video games for this machine because it offered me the opportunity to create and stylize and design and produce the philosophy in a computer game that I wanted to do, which is a multiplayer game. And that means that two people can play at the same time on the same computer. Now this effect right here is for a game called 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, being done by Jim Sachs. And as you can see, the quality of the artwork is not just superior, but very realistic. It is, it's ungame looking. It, it, you feel like you're looking at a real little sea. I would be willing to bet my career that a kid would try to learn more if he had a computer available to him because it can be entertaining as well as teaching. Well, every year in my junior high, we have a, a big science report. Instead of just like writing the whole thing out, then typing it on like a typewriter or something, because I could just tell the computer to, uh, to like print it out and it would just do it. It was a lot easier than it used to be. Anybody that don't type, and I'm not one of one that is peck, the, the Amiga, the way the mouse works with it, you can do anything you want to do. And most kids, uh, you know, all young people, all old people that, like I am, that don't use the, the, the keyboard, can do whatever they want with the mouse. And this is the fun part about it. Using it to walk and chew gum at the same time. When we first brought the Amiga home, we were all excited because of all the potential. And we put up a demo program called Kaleidoscope that was just these incredible, gorgeous colors and shapes. And for two hours, we sat there and watched it going, wow, to each other. And then we called up our friends who came over and said, wow. Because prior to that, I mean, working in offices, you get to know a lot of personal computers because that's what everybody uses. And I didn't like IBMs because they were just so slow and stodgy. And everything that had to do about it was so business-oriented that you know, I'm a novelist and trying to be creative on an IBM was like beating your head against the wall. One of the things about the Amiga that still puts it ahead of every other machine that's out there, and I don't care how much it costs, is the fact that it multitasks so well. IBM, they keep promising OS2 and they keep promising this and they keep promising that. The Macintosh has come out with this thing called MultiFinder. It's not multitasking, it's different. It's, it's not having programs which can interreact with each other at the same exact time. I mean, you could have, actually have a program feeding another program data and then process the data with the second program while you're doing something totally different. Multitasking eliminates the need for a printer buffer for one thing because you could have the machine printing while you go and you do some more word processing. He's using it to inspire his students. Art is a very time intensive process. And uh, for all the changes and looking at the image and considering it and so forth. And a lot of the process needs to be able to accommodate you know, inspiration, which means that a person needs to say, aha, I have an idea, and be able to go right through their system. This was an uh, exercise from the intro class uh, using um, paid software. This is from the 3D class. This is from the uh, intro class, building objects from primitive forms. This is how we introduce the students to 3D computer graphics. In order to produce these type of graphics on the system, it would cost you two to three times what it cost you to do it on the Amiga. It's a funny thing about the computer. It's kind of like uh, pilots that fly. I'm a pilot. I like um, musicians, you know. When you find one chord, you say, man, did you try that dominant seven chord? You know, same thing with the computer. You start to fool with it and every, you want to share it with your friends. So I started talking then with, I never did learn, still haven't learned computer talk as some do, but I get my question over, how do you do this? And they started to show me 
and that's when I fell in love with the Amiga computer. He's using it to explore the oceans. We needed some way to superimpose um, relevant inf information that the vehicle is heading, how deep it is, uh, things of that nature. We wanted to display it directly on the screen so that the operator, while he's, we call it flying the vehicle, is operating the vehicle. He can, without taking his eyes off the screen where he's driving, he can tell where he's going and how, how deep he is. With the Amiga, we found that you know, here at Deep Ocean Engineering that it's so easy to create graphic images and really helps to get your ideas across. He uses it in his whole life. The Amiga finds its way into every nook and cranny in our business and in our home, uh, just as an entertainment uh, computer. I mean, there is nothing better to play games on if you, if you like games. I particularly like a lot of the flight simulator games. I am a musician also, so I've got a, a great variety of the, of the sequencing software for, for music, and we've got it hooked up with, with a PostScript laser printer, which gives us typeset quality output. In the area of ray tracing and 3D animation, when this computer first came out, it absolutely stunned the video industry and the computer industry because this they thought was not possible on a computer that was less than several hundred thousand dollars. We've used um, other computers, uh, IBM computers, Mac computers, uh, certainly the Amiga, and other uh, video specialty computers uh, such as a, a Dubner and a Paintbox and an Alias. Uh, we use all of those in our work, but, but I would say that what we have found for the Amiga is that because of its price performance, it's, it's enabled a whole class of corporate users to use the Amiga to use computer graphics and animation that previously couldn't. I edit uh, my professional productions at some of the top video editing facilities in New York City and I am the only one that they allow to bring an Amiga into a professional video facility and when I do there is a crowd that gathers in the edit suite because here are people used to seeing computers that cost a quarter of a million dollars and they say this they see this outperforming it and they can't believe it he's using it to sustain a legend if you have an idea that you want to create something and if you like I am at that have an arranger and I can't tell him exactly what I want I can't say like I want this chord to sound like this or sound like that I can put it in the Amiga and the Amiga will tell him because it will play it the way I want it I can't write real good but I can peck out or take my guitar I got my fingers in the position on, on Lucille here and I'm holding it here and I got this hand on the Amiga and I'm going with that because I know this is what I want, that's what I want, this is what I want and I put it in the Amiga and the Amiga plays it back for me.